Hello and welcome to the first in this series of videos on using the data visualization tool Tableau Public. And there'll also be some associated information in the uh, blog as well. In the past I've talked about data visualization using Excel and tools like IBM's Many Eyes. Uh, Many Eyes was one of the first publicly available tools that appeared. Um, it's described by IBM as being sort of permanently in, in, in beta. Um, it hasn't really changed that much since it first appeared. It's a good introduction to, to data visualization. It's pretty straightforward to use, though you are somewhat limited in what you can do with it, particularly in comparison to Tableau Public. If you're interested, have a look at the website. Um, I also did a video on this a little while ago, um, so the link there will also be in the info bar. Um, Tableau Public uh, appeared, I guess, a year to 18 months ago. And it is a very powerful tool for doing data analysis and data presentation. Uh, it's often said we live in the era of big data. Um, lots of data sources, international and national, are now becoming available for us to use. Um, so we can use them in our research, we can use them in our, our study. Uh, but how do we get the information out of them in a sensible fashion? Tableau Public will help with that. It is a bit of a steep learning curve, it has to be said, certainly compared to um, IBM's Mini Eyes, for example, but it's well worth embarking on the learning curve. Um, so have a look at their web page. Uh, there's a number of videos there, a number of very nice short videos which explain what Tableau Public is and what it does. Um, so here's an example of what's called a dashboard, uh, which I created in Tableau Public for some data from one of the first year's uh, Diet Diaries exercises. Um, and the big set of um, stack bar charts which you see there the sort of thing you see in presentations now imagine you've got two minutes to explain that it's probably going to be quite hard to do what Tableau public does is allow us to dynamically change the data we, we, we're presenting so for example here i'm just highlighting salt and we can see straight away that the person who this died down belongs to um, obviously ate several bags of crisps on thursday um, we can integrate the data with maps um, Maps, as, as you, you would expect, in zoom in, they, this is the alcohol consumption based on World Health Organization figures uh, for a particular year in, in that figure, in, in that region, 1967 to 2008. Um, we can zoom in, we can, we can show how things change over time and do lots of exciting stuff. We'll probably have a look at that particular graph a little bit later on in this video. There's a simpler one just of World Health Organizations. Um, Here's one of diary iron, um, orange and the blue uh, segments of pie charts indicate there whether diary iron came from animal origin or vegetable origin and each of the pies refers to a particular country. So we look at individual countries, we can look at those countries which, which are exceeding the recommended daily amounts and those countries which aren't. Um, in this dashboard we have obviously the map with the pie chart superimposing, we've got a table and also we've got some textual information and some pictures as well. Um, here's another one which we prepared, prepared here, this is from uh, one of our final year students, Rob's uh, presentation at the Midway Point Symposium for the final year project. Uh, Rob's doing a project looking at uh, what, what school students eat in comparison to well played. So he's got some schools in a local town, he's comparing what the students eat uh, as primary school students and as secondary school students and come up with some interesting information. Um, we'll talk about this in more detail. I'm going to op open up this data visualization. We'll have a look at what it does and how we can control this. Okay, so what do you need? You need Tableau Public. It's a free download. Uh, you just need an email address. You can download it, install it on your home machine or your laptop. I will see about getting this installed in machines in SSE might take a little while. Um, it, it, once you once you you have an account, you will be able to open that account up and there in, in the top of the page is my account with various data tablets which various data tables which I've already produced. The other thing you're going to need is an add-in for Excel. Um, this is because the data needs to be manipulated somewhat compared to the way we normally present it in Excel. Uh, that link there will give you quite a lot of information on why this is necessary. And there's a free add-in tool called the Reshaper plugin. It's basically just like any add-in you use in Excel. You install it, you click a button, and it will reshape your data for you. 
there's quite a lot of information in the uh, knowledge base from Tableau Public on this, uh, so it's well worth reading if you're interested in why this happens. Um, and there's just another example of it. There's just a page which explains in detail what happens to the data. Um, what we're going to be interested in, eventually you'll get an add-in. Uh, there'll be a tab called Tableau and a little button there called Reshape Data, which will do everything for you. Um, here's an example of some unreshaped data. This is a typical data format in what's called a cross tab. So we've got some countries there and we've got uh, a month of buy-in again from the WHO figures. And that's how we normally present data in Excel and you can easily do things like stack bar charts and that. Now to use that in Tableau Public you do need to reshape the data. We'll say the tool will do it for you so you can get your data which now looks like that. So in column A countries we have now two entries for Albania, uh, one for animal origin, one for vegetable origin and then the amounts. Uh, as I said the tool will do this for you automatically. One slight issue is that uh, certainly columns B onwards you probably have to rename these yourself. Of course in some cases you might find your data is already in this format so you don't need to do the reshaping uh, but often you will have to. Okay so Rob's data here's an example. Uh, this was collected but from a series of diet diaries as you might expect uh, and then the data was collated into information for primary schools and secondary schools and we've also got some information there on the Eat Well chart. So the stack bar chart there is uh, information about comparing the Eat Well plate, um, lo looking at the percentage of food rather in from the Eat Well plate categories in the diets of kids from primary and secondary schools in the local town. And there's also a pie chart there with the Eat Well plate. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll close this down and we'll open up uh, the dashboard directly in Tableau Public and we'll have a look at what it can do for us. Here's the dashboard we created from Rob's data. Um, it's been uploaded to the Tableau Public server and I should emphasise here that the word public is important. Uh, these data are available for anyone who wants to search for them so it's important if you have any uh, personal data or data about organisations that you anonymise it. So in this case Although we are talking about primary and secondary schools in a particular town in the northeast, I haven't given any information on them. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at the dashboard, which at first glance seems to be a little bit complicated. Uh, I've included a number of things here to illustrate what can be done. Up here we have a couple of graphs for the information on primary and secondary school in food consumption derived from di diet diaries and then compared to the eWell plate. So there's a graph here there and there's also a table here. Uh, there's a little bit of text explaining that values uh, below 100% indicate the well plate recommended amount was not achieved. Values above 100% the recommended amount, amount was exceeded. Uh, I'm going to patch out of the well plate there, of which more later. We're actually going to use this to control how some of this data is displayed. A little bit of text about the subject. Um, that's an image uh, of the well plate. And also we've got a window here into the Department of Health's website on the subject. Okay, uh, so now we're going to have a look at the tools over here which allow us to manipulate data. Now I should point out you may occasionally see an error message, um, some of the effect that it's taken a while to send data. This data is stored in the cloud so sometimes it can be a little bit slow. Uh, be patient, the data will be set, stored at some point. Um, it, usually have a, it usually only delayed for a few seconds. Right, up here we have a colour chart uh, which relates to the graphs over here. We could have set this up to control various aspects of the dash dashboard, but it, I decided not to. Uh, the ones down here, uh, these two tick sets, of, uh, sets of tick boxes and this slider and also the well plate do control what we're interested in. Um, so if we have a look at the comparison one first, at the moment we've got categories for primary school and secondary school. Uh, at the moment it's all, all on, so if I turn them all off, all of this data will disappear. We can bring back up the primary school data on its own. Um, get rid of that again, make sure make the data disappear, and then we can bring up the secondary school data on its own. So that's quite useful if you just want to do a quick comparison with the two. I'll bring everything up. Um, in the category food, we've got all set at the moment, and these are the categories from Eat Well Plate. So if I turn them all off, uh, again, the data disappears. So if we're interested just in bread, pasta and rice and meat and fish and eggs, we can bring that data up. And if we want it just from primary schools, we can get rid of secondary schools. Uh, so quite powerful ways of manipulating data. We can bring everything back up again. 
Right, so all our data is back now. Now, as I mentioned, this is uh, essentially comparing actual diets to the Eat Well plate. And we've got a slider here which will allow us to look at those categories of food where less than the Eat Well plate was eaten, for example. So we'll drag this down to around 100%. It's a little bit hard to get it exactly. Ooh, I did that, and then it went. There we go, 100%. Um, now we'll notice the data has reshaped itself just have a couple of ca a couple of categories for primary school and one category for secondary three categories for secondary school and we we'll go the other way for simplicity I'll just bring this up make the data all disappear and then pull this all the way up uh, to show those food categories where um, actual intake is exceeding the amounts recommended by the UL players and I don't think it's much of a surprise which ones they are we're going to look at these again in a little bit more detail Okay, I'm going to reset everything by pulling the sliders back to their original points. You've got to make sure you pull the sliders back all the way, otherwise you'll find some data is missing. If there's data missing in your table, for example, it's because you haven't dragged it all the way. Okay, the Ewell place. Um, this is included as uh, an example of another way to control data. So if you're just interested in bread, pasta and rice, we can just click there and it will get rid of everything apart from bread, pasta and rice. And click outside, anywhere around there, it will bring up various other data things. Um, so if you look at um, fruit and veg, bring that up. I'm going to hold down the shift key now and click on fats and sugars. So we've now, now got two data sets there. And fruit and veg, uh, primary school, not great. Secondary school has got a lot worse. Uh, fats and sugars. Um, not so great in the opposite direction. Um, very useful way of click quickly presenting categorized information. We've only got a relatively small number of categories here, but you can imagine if we had a large number of categories, this would greatly speed up the process and increase the, increase the clarity of your presentation. Okay, so we brought everything back. Um, that's all I'm going to say about Rob's uh, thing. I'm going to now open up another uh, example just to show you some of the powerful things we can do with this okay here's a interactive map uh, based on dairy and consumption from world health organization uh, food and agriculture organization statistics now this is getting to an area of quite a lot of data there's data on almost every country in the world here uh, and again in the ways we saw earlier you only can select just an individual country for example angola uh, click on Angola and the data will reformat itself just to show Angola. Uh, I'll bring, bring, bring everything back up again. Right, it, it's a map and we can zoom in and out of the map. So we can zoom out quite a long way. And we can zoom in. Um, sometimes it will take a little bit uh, of time to uh, do this very zoom in aspect, but we'll, we'll continue to zoom in. Now we head towards the uh, Northern Europe. Okay, there's Northern Europe. We could have also used this selection tool here, which we'll, we'll do now actually, just to select uh, the United Kingdom. Okay, there's a little chunk of itself. And there's the information for the United Kingdom and various other part countries in Northern Europe. Uh, so if you look at animal origin, we see um, 4.1 uh, milligrams per person a day. Um, compared to vegetable origin of about 9.8. Okay, if we zoom out, I'll continue to zoom out, so we can find out where we are, and then look, for example, at uh, North Africa, uh, select some of the countries here, we'll see a very signif significant difference in the amount of iron that is obtained from animal sources. It's much lower, for example, in uh, Morocco here. Um, this highlight there, uh, vegetable or origin 14.6 and uh, animal origin 1.7 and similarly in other parts of Africa which illustrates in a dynamic way uh, a key difference worldwide in where people from different parts of the world obtain their dietary iron. So I'll just bring this out. Okay, there we go. Okay, thanks for listening and uh, we'll be back with part two in this sometime in the near future.